Can you all hear me? I'm very happy to be with you today. I'm very happy to be part of this specific panel. We heard the plans for the future, for the following day, and I think we shall all agree that we move in the right direction. Together, let us take a look at the more technocratic and bureaucratic approach and see to what extent these plans can be implemented. We shall look at today how we got here and what is lying ahead. Here you can see, I'd say, the main thing for the agri-food sector in Greece. Can you hear me better? So, three indicators that we have here showing the contribution of the agri-food sector to the economy, number one, to experts, number two, and to the industry, number three. So, in over the last decade in Greece, all these indicators are moving upwards and uh, there is an increase in all indices in Europe as well. So this is one of the major pillars for our country. Another thing that was mentioned earlier on has to do with the fact that apart from the agri-food sector being a primary sector, it's, it was resilient to the crisis because we had numerous crises, as I said. At first we had around 2008-2009, the economic crisis. And you can see what happened to the Greek experts, uh, the onset of the crisis. In uh, green, you can see the agri-food sector in the experts and the overall experts in pink. So you can see that there was a halt at the experts. They don't grow so fast. For the food sector, no influence whatsoever. They keep growing. And you can see that in uh, the graph in the middle because we gain a bigger share in the EU market. We've been doing that all along. We have not been affected by the crisis. And the share that we gain actually has uh, qualitative aspects. So apart from increasing experts, we penetrate more difficult, more developed markets of the Western economies that are hard to enter on one hand, but on, on the other hand, profitability is better. So big profits in terms of quantity, in terms of quality as well. But before overcoming the economic crisis, there's a new crisis, the pandemic of COVID-19. The agri-food sector again is a winner because you can see what happened in 2020 with the sales in the agri-food sector. Major four in all sectors. There were only two sectors that managed to survive, the agri-food sector and the food industry. How is that? The weapon is something you can find in the graph in the middle because we had good performance in terms of the experts plus 12% of uh, the experts Greek food. Only the medicines were doing better, the drugs were doing better. Keep the 12% because that was at the best performance in Europe. So we were pioneering in uh, the food exports amidst the COVID-19 situation. At the same time, there was an increase in the volume and in price, which means that we did not buy the share, we did not buy it out the share, we won that. It was a gain for Greece. Let's go a step backwards so as to see how we achieved that. What did we want to achieve? We wanted this increase in exports to be reflected in the increase in production. Ideally, this is what we would want. In practice, this is not what happened. In reality, the increase in exports by approximately 2 billion the last few years, from 3 to 5 billion, it was basically the export of the surplus from the reduction in the domestic consumption because of the crisis. So 
production was um, at a standstill, let's say, it remained at the same level for the last, let's say, more or less 20 years. Same production of a period of 20 years at a time when the global production has skyrocketed 170%. The increased population, the increase of the uh, intake of calories per person, so all these uh, trends go upwards. But the share of Greece in uh, production is reduced in the world and in Europe. Now, I don't want you to be under the impression that experts, let's say, that we achieved the increase in experts is not valuable. On the other hand, I would say that this was the first significant step. We showed that the markets are really looking forward to receiving Greek products and when we want to increase exports, we can do that. But in order to continue with this uh, penetration in exports, we need to move on to uh, another uh, level. And to do that, we need an increase in production. To do that, we need to face the structural weaknesses of the agricultural sector in Greece. Very briefly, four areas where we're lagging behind in relation to Europe, production, promotion, human capital and synergies. For the production, as I said, again, small extent, it's not necessarily the small scale, it's not necessarily uh, something bad, but we need partnerships. Then low R&D, again, uh, the promotion, weak branding, weak corporations and cooperatives. Then human capital, again, uh, the low level of uh, agricultural education and training, even in young people. And then uh, for the synergies, we see that the uh, industry is uh, having a small added value to the agri-food sector. This is a problem of the economy because we do not opt for synergies, either business to business, B2B, or the business sector and universities. Therefore, to move on to the next level, take the a further step, we need to come face to face with these deficiencies, with these areas where we're lacking behind, structural deficiencies. So the next few years, uh, is it possible for us to make headway our conditions, uh, the proper ones, let us move on. Let's see what we think will happen in the coming years in the agri-food sector on a global basis. And this is the theme, the topic of our Congress. Two parameters we have here that will bring tectonic changes in the, the sector, climate change and COVID-19. Climate change, starting with that, in the summer, scientists said explicitly, what you are experiencing is climate change, which is caused by human behaviour, human actions. And the leaders in Europe and in other countries had to take some steps which impacted the energy sector, of course, which is the sector uh, closely related to the problem. This transition is positive. It is necessary, but in the short term, this created some disturbances in uh, energy with uh, the increase in natural gas in electricity. What does that all mean to you, to the agri-food sector? All that increases uh, the uh, uh, natural resources, the prices of electricity, uh, the prices of uh, fertilizer, CO2, all of that. So this is the first step, the first thing that uh, the sector is facing as a result not necessarily of the climate change but uh, at the wake of the necessary reaction of the leaders trying to beat that. The climate change of course was shattering this year with uh, floods and with wildfires, even in our country, unfortunately. And there are difficult times lying ahead, even if the measures we take are very strict. All sectors will need to will face uh, natural disasters. The agri-food sector is, be, is going to be the first one to be hit by that, by the climate change. Now, moving on to COVID-19. The third cause of deaths globally Again, governments are trying to react in either to either slow down or stop the uh, waves of the pandemic and they impose restrictions. Of course, that brings about 
restrictions in the movement of goods. And you can see another thing that we all face, a big increase in the cargo, uh, in the freight uh, prices. And how does that, how is that translated uh, to the agri-food sector? Prices again go up. It's not, uh, it's not at the highest uh, level, but again, over the, uh, the last 10 years, I think that they've reached a peak. Again, this is at the way of the reaction of um, the politicians to what is happening during the pandemic, because there had to be this restriction of movement of goods. COVID-19, of course, uh, gave this big impulse to an impetus to the digitalization. So the many services had to be digitalized. And as you can see in the last graph, the agri-food sector is the least digitalized at this point, which means that there's a bigger distance, a longer distance it has to cover. This slide shows the problematics of our times, I agree. But let us reverse the coin. Remember that big changes happen, that you occur when there's a big disturbance in the system. What we will see in the future is big changes, changing the status quo, and it's a good opportunity for new players to emerge. So countries that want to change their production model, they have the opportunity to do that. There will be room for that. What is missing, you're going to ask? What do we need so that this disturbance, this turmoil can lead to something positive. You need resources, you need capitals, you need funds. And thankfully we do have that. We have three funds at this point. There used to be two funds in the previous years. We had uh, the uh, NSRF. Uh, now we have the recovery fund. And of course, there was the Common Agricultural Policy. More than three billion from the recovery fund in uh, the next few years. And another important thing mentioned by the previous speakers, all funds have um, an investment, they are of an investment nature. Take a look at uh, the areas, green transition, digital transition, in all funds, they touch upon what we said are the parameters of uh, tomorrow, very targeted actions. And then we have uh, the transformation, the reform of the economy, the human capital. Do you remember the slide I showed you earlier on with the what is missing with the gaps in uh, the agri-food sector? Again, this is what we needed. So targeted actions, targeted resources there to strengthen the agri-food sector. So I think everything, all conditions are favorable. We want, we have people who uh, really want Greek products. We uh, have uh, conditions that allow for new players, and we also have money. We have the the funds. So based on our, on uh, what we think, if we manage to make the most of the money of the funds that we will get, the increase in sales for the agri-food sector over the next five years can be more than fifty percent. It can exceed fifty uh, percent, which translates to eleven billion. This is important if you take a look at the increase and in the growth of the rest of the economy, which is approximately 30. So there will be uh, double the growth of the agri-food sector compared to the rest of the economy. But all the things that we said, the honest intention and the plans that we heard from the previous speakers to strengthen and support the sector, all the estimates that we have, the numbers I showed you, in order for all of that to happen, we need something basic. We need people engaged in the sector to dare to move on to the next day so the last graph, before I finish my presentation, has been my effort to measure 
how willing farmers are to make the most of these opportunities and move on to the next stage. So I combined a series of uh, researches, some of them by ministries, and I'm, I'm being very optimistic. So there's a new index I suggest here. See the extent to which people are willing to move on. Approximately 25% uh, of uh, of the people are ready to move on. Another 25%, they're willing to do that. And then we have another percentage which is more attached to the past, 47%. So all of us around this sector who are not here to take all the difficult decisions, decide whether we move on or not, but we're here to strengthen, what are we going to do? Our aim is going to be to guide them, to support them, to train them, so that this tendency measured here in the, green, in the yellow bar can go further up. I think this is the bet we have over the next five years. All of us have that bet. Thank you.